You have to start all of them by dancing. I know. I feel like it's tradition now. Yeah. Hello, everyone. We are live. Welcome to the One More Page Holiday Office Hours. Uh, we're very glad to have you. Amanda here, joined by the lovely Kelly, who's Hello. streaming from an undisclosed location. Secret. It's actually my house, which we haven't left since March. That's what she wants you to think. <laughs> in Hawaii. How are you doing today, Kelly? I am fine. It's a fabulous Friday. Uh, half of the pumpkins we bought last week at a pumpkin patch have molded, so we're going to go buy more so we can be very festive and carve them this weekend, which will be lovely. I mean, How about you? Is still pretty festive. The mold is still pretty. Well, I mean, it's gruesome and disgusting, right. right? And a crucial part of the decomposition process. I don't know. I'm homeschooling my kids, so everything has to be science. Perfect. So this is just part of it. Tyler, <laughs> you, should, you should put like a Dwight Schrute and get them to put their faces inside of it. Uh, yeah. You know, we. <laughs> my 13-year-old was talking about going as a pumpkin head and, you know, carving out the eyes. And I was like, perhaps not the one that is covered in mold spores. I don't know. Personal preference, right? I mean, listen, you got to let him follow his own path, Kelly. <laughs> You're becoming a young adult. Very good advice, Amanda. Very of good advice. all the things you can make, this can't be the worst one. <laughs> that is quite true. And we all need our entertainment in the age of COVID being stuck at home. Exactly. But speaking of entertainment, we are here to help people find theirs. So these are our holiday office hours. We're going to be doing them every Friday um, from now on until the week before um, Christmas. So we hit Hanukkah in there, too. Um, and our goal is just to take different categories of books of things that people are into and answer your questions about them. If you say like, hey, for, like this one is about food for the person who's eaten everything. It's like, oh, my gosh, my uncle was a chef for 30 years and he loves to read. He's read all of it. What can I get them? We can answer that for you, but we're also going to be giving recommendations. I'm a very happy <laughs> of books here. Couldn't even grasp it. Uh, so if you don't have questions, you can still listen in and see what we have. Uh, want me to start us off, Kelly? Yes, take it away. Perfect. So my first book for the person who's eaten everything is this little guy, Stuff oh. Every Cheese Lover Should Know. Isn't this Yes. A Oh, I didn't realize it was so small. It's a I very know. cute form factor. Yeah, here, you have it next to my face for for size. <laughs> um, so this is a perfect, this will fit great in a stocking. If you do stockings, it'd be hard to fit in a menorah. But listen, we can make it work. Um, and it is an absolute delight. So I was flipping through it, and it's really interesting. Like, I consider myself decently knowledgeable about food, and I did not know a lot about this about cheese. Like, it's got sort of the basic stuff, like why blue cheese is blue, but it also talks about like how to buy cheese. It talks about keeping records of the cheeses that you like the same way you would for wine, which is super interesting. Like choosing contrasting cheeses for a cheese board, how to wrap cheese. Ooh. So this is great and it's new. It just came out this year, like a month or two ago. Um, and so people don't have it yet. And it's a really great thing for like the budding food lover in your life. Or if you have like a college kid who like wants to be a little pretentious about cheese, as we all do, um, this would be great for them. And you could you give them like a cheese board or something. That'd be really fun. Super cool. Yeah, I love it. What so, do we have next, Kelly? I think Cool Beans Should Come Next by yeah. Joe Yonan. I mean, if we're talking about various different groups of foods, beans are the thing. Um, it's got 125 different recipes that teach you all about how to cook all the different kinds of pulses and beans and lentils and every possible kind of bean and every possible technique. But the thing about the recipes is they are just, they're so wonderfully diverse. You've got um, Ethiopian red lentil dip and harissa and carrot and white bean dip. Mm. And and my favorite was the lady cream pea, sweet potato and charred okra salad, which was, it had this Ooh, Southern memory flair of, of wonderful food. Um, he's a food editor at the Washington Post and it's funny, it's got funny anecdotes and he's really, really passionate about beans and beans being one of the most underrated foods out there. Really, if you don't feel like you know how to do anything other than put refried beans from a can in a pot, this is the book to teach you how to make beans yes. really deliciously tasty and I love it. Well, That's we all, I feel like we all got into beans at the beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> blew it up on those dry beans like True. if you've got cans yeah if you've got dried beans that you have no idea what to do with this will tell you how to cook them so much better than you know dried up old recipes that you never even thought about how to make good right this is better than just putting it in a pot with some rice and not doing anything else to it this is gonna make it interesting not to knock beans and rice that is a highly efficient and time-honored tradition interesting ways mm -hmm, absolutely. and you can make it taste good while you're doing it 
Yes. Um, so I wanted to highlight another favorite of mine. I actually read this in April or May, I think something like that. It is Notes from a Young Black Chef mm. by Kwame Onuachi. Um, look at that tall drink of water. I mean, right it's there. It's a great cover. It's such a good cover. I love it. Um, so this tells the story of Kwame Onuachi, who um, by the time he was 27 years old, he had opened and closed a one of the most talked about restaurants in America, sold drugs in New York, been shipped off to rural Nigeria to earn respect. Um, he had started his own catering company, earning $20,000 in candy bars he sold in the subway. He was on Top Chef. Um, he is fascinating. He's written this fabulous memoir about his life. Um, plus, you know, his restaurant that he opened was here in DC, which is super cool. So you get kind of that local flavor. Um, this is one of those books that we sold a lot of when everyone was buying books by black authors. And then people kind of forgot that they should still do that, even when it's not like the only time to buy books by black authors. <laughs> You could do that all year, guys. It's not it's not just for that like three week period where we all got really nervous about it. You can always do it. And this is a great option. <laughs> I got to jump right on that because one of my favorite books of the year was The Cooking Gene by yes. my, Michael Twitty, who is an amazing culinary historian. And the book, it, it's a memoir and it is absolutely stunning. He weaves the story of his ancestors and his family back through this exploration of race and the origins of Southern food. And it's beautifully researched as mm -hmm. everything is when you have Michael Twitty doing anything and it's poignant and, and everything about it shows you how food was meant to move people and to be shared and to be loved. And that these historical Southern foods traditions are part of the African diaspora and are should be elevated and honored and loved. It, it's absolutely stunning. So oh. yes, you don't just buy books by extraordinarily amazing black authors that celebrate culinary tradition just in a few weeks of the year. We have them in stock now, so it's easier than it was. <laughs> um, all this, and now speaking of super cool American culinary tradition, I want to highlight this book that I actually, this is what happens sometimes when you're doing these things and you like go looking for books, you find books on the shelf that you'd kind of forgotten about. And that's when I discovered right. this one, American Cuisine and How It Got This Way. Doesn't that look cool? Isn't that cover gorgeous? I haven't heard of this. This looks amazing. I know. So it's by the guy who wrote um, 10 Restaurants That Changed America. Ah. Um, which we had as like a coffee table book in my parents' house, or not a coffee, <laughs> but like, it was like in the coffee table. We had other books there too. And I would flip through it all the time. Um, and this is a, just like a history of American cuisine and how it sort of changed throughout history. I was flipping through it beforehand and it's super interesting. It's one of those nice books where you can like read, and this camera angle's killing me, read a couple chapters at a time. Like you wouldn't necessarily sit down and read this whole thing through if you didn't want to, although you could, but like it talks about you know, like the different ways that like canned goods came in. It talks about Mark Twain's various food essays where he talked about all the foods that he missed most about America when he was in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, the issue with Mark Twain in Europe, by the way, seems to be that he just only stayed in hotels. Like perhaps he would have enjoyed European food more had he not just been living in American hotels the whole time. But that's a digression that you can learn more about in the book. The <laughs> goal of the food processing. Like if you like food and also history, this is a super cool book. It's it's really lovely. Like this would make a great gift. Just it's got a good heft to it, but it's floppy, so you can you know you're not gonna hurt someone if by giving them this book. There's so much secret juicy history behind right. American food, and not just restaurants food, but and not just our development of unique cuisines that are a blend. But also, I love the concept of investigating food safety and food processing and how right. it changed American lives. Yeah, and specifically, like, American cuisine is such a weird, like, back and forth. Like, it was affected so much by just wars, um, wars and immigrants. I wish yeah. we could how most of American history was shaped. But to still get it through the lens of food is fascinating. Um, this is for the person who, like me, watched nothing but, like, Good Eats and Unwrapped growing up. <laughs> this, this is that book. <laughs> So how about Modern Comfort Food by Ina Garden? Yeah. Um, I, I just, I, I feel like Barefoot Contessa, you cannot go wrong. This is her newest one that's come out. And it. I wish I had it here to show you because it's just got Ina's incredibly comforting, sweet, mothering sort of face yeah, on I'll it. I'll do what I can. Yeah. 
<laughs> and, and she's in her beautiful kitchen doing amazing things. And the recipes are absolutely top notch. These, these really are American comfort food classics. I don't have any examples. I don't have it with me. Flip through it, look at our description on our website, but it really is for the person who is, I think perfectly in this quarantine, wants to come back to comfort food that's mm -hmm. really delicious. And it's filled with Ina's unique touch of how she makes every dish like butter laden delicious indulgence um but they're easy and they're very quick none of them are very complicated she's not reinventing the wheel but it is a wonderful sort of warmth of a of a cookbook to add if you're looking to get back to some delicious cooking in the in the sadness of the pandemic as we get into yeah. the cold winter months ina has got some amazing soups and grilled sandwiches and things that are just absolutely like a blast from the past from my childhood at least mm. I love that. Yeah, that's going to be too, if you're interested in that book, I think that's going to be a big seller for the holiday season. So I would buy that book early because the thing about cookbooks, um, which we sort of learned with salt, fat, acid, heat last year is that when the first printing is done and it's the holiday season, it's hard to reprint them because they're big, expensive books. Um, yeah. So if we sell out of them and the publisher is out of them, then we may not get more printed by for December. Um, so that's one that you should, any of the, like any of these books, but particularly the sort of cookbooks with the glossy page illustrated books, buy those early. Like those, if you had to pick a couple books to buy early, cause I understand you can't always buy everything at once in October for your holidays books, but like those are the ones or any other big sort of illustrated book. That's what you buy now. Um, I mean, so really just about any of the books that we're talking about for holiday shopping. The reason we're doing these wonderful holiday office hours is that you get a jump on your holiday shopping. If we can give you the impetus and the motivation to get out there and shop now, it's going to save everybody a lot of heartache with difficulty for shipping and sourcing as we get closer to the holidays in this tough time. Yeah. Um, so another, this one's a memoir that I absolutely adore. And I talked a lot about this one last year when it came out in hardcover, but now it's in paperback. So it's even more accessible and it saved me the, plum. me the plums. Save me Ruth Michael. Yes. Uh, I just adore this book. Um, this is about, um, Ruth's time at Gourmet Magazine. Um, as she kind of revolutionized the magazine. If you've read any of her other memoirs, which talks about being like the New York Times food critic, they're all fabulous, but I particularly love this one. This is also the first one of hers that I read, so it holds a special place in my heart. But I also just love that magazine. Like, it kind of gives me Devil Wears Prada vibes if Meryl Streep's character was not quite so terrible, like, was just like a regular person doing, like, getting by in the world. Um, but also, like, kicking ass and taking names and revolutionizing food. And 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 the, the difficulty she had with um, coming through her de personal development as a, a food writer and a food lover yeah. and somebody who was passionate about cuisine into an executive space that was a very classically male space mm -hmm. and bringing in her own ideals as a feminist and transitioning into an executive position that was, it was challenging and very difficult. And it, it goes through the entirety of her decade at Condé Nast and Gourmet, yeah. which I think from the start of its old fusty, you know, the beginnings to right. the really devastating end of it, you get the entirety of her journey, which is beautiful. Yeah, so I wanted you all to buy it in hardcover. A lot of you did, we sold this grade last year, um, but if you didn't, paperback now, a little cheaper, a little easier to give as a gift, pick it up. And also she's, I mean, she's still got Tender at the Bone and Comfort Me with Apples and Garlic and Sapphire. I feel like her books are the best titled books in all of food writing. It's amazing. They're so good. She she really, it, I mean, it speaks to the talent of her writing. Like yes. she's really one of, I, one of my favorite food writers writing these days. Yes. Um, let's see, how about um, Vegetable Kingdom by Terry Bryant, yes. um, which is, he is another extraordinary uh, black chef in the culinary world. He is a food justice activist. And so his priority in this world is bringing healthy, just and sustainable food systems to people everywhere. And it, so it, this book, it's really, it's for vegans and vegetarians, but it's for anyone who wants to up their game with vegetables. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's all about bringing interesting techniques to the flavors and spices and fresh ingredients. And um, I think there's more than a hundred recipes in it. And, and I love, there's this feeling of like, family in the book. It's this ideas of bringing everyone together in the comfort of food and sharing food together and loving good food together. Right. Um, and it's it's an examination of Afro, Asian, diaspora inspired dishes as well. We're moving, and I love that he moves us away from the Eurocentric model of culinary right. cuisine. Um, so I was just looking at my notes. My favorites were roasted sweet potato and asparagus po' boys warm butter bean salad with roasted bell peppers and barbecue carrots with slow cooked white beans. And the, just the techniques Hello. are so good. I know they just make your mouth salivate. The photography is stunning mm -hmm. and it's, 
it's the celebrating the richness and the heritage of black food in America, which I think is just an extraordinary place for us to be right now. Yeah, and without being meat centric, which a lot of the more, you know, when you first think of um, sort of that more soul food style cooking, which is, I mean, not the best term, but it tends to be really meat centric. So this is a great way to do it. He's got a picture of, I think it's like Mushroom Po' Boys on the back cover of that book. I have the book, I just haven't cooked from India, and I just like salivate over that. That's gonna be a project one of these days. I, I think it's the Mushroom food. Toast. I think it's, it's Ooh. yeah, and I think it's the Mushroom Toast. That's his alternative to the avocado toast. I might be wrong. Amazing. Might be wrong. I've been very into mushrooms lately. Um, uh, so tis the season. I know. Another book um, by an amazing author who a lot of you know and love is With the Fire on High by, by the amazing Elizabeth uh, Oswego. Mm. Um, she's fabulous. She wrote The Poet X, which won about every award in the world. <laughs> uh, so a lot of you may have heard of her on this, but this is um, her second book, uh, or her next book after that one. And I just adore it. First of all, like, look at that cover. Oh wow! It is just mouth. Doesn't it make you just like want to like take them all in your arms and travel up to the tropical island and just like lay in a hammock and devour these fruits? Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. The designer did such a good job with those it's colors. Perfect. And the um, underneath is also Aww. just beautiful. Um, it's a fabulous book. It's about this girl, um, Amoni, who um is a teen mom and is just like working hard every day to make a life for herself um, and for her child. You know, she's going to get through high school. She's going to make a career for herself, but she also just loves cooking. Um, it's her true passion, but it's not something that's super attainable for her because of the life that she has. Um, and it's about following your dreams and discovering that sometimes when you follow your life's passion, things do work out for you. Um, I am a sucker for fiction books of with food in them. It's sort of how I, it's one of the ways I got most into food growing up um, when I was a kid and when I was a teen, I absolutely do this, adore this. Like everything Elizabeth Acevedo writes, the writing is lyrical and beautiful and gorgeous. Um, and I highly, highly recommend it. It's delicious. Aww. Um, how about uh, Tasty Pride? And I'm gonna get Jesse's last name wrong and I'm so sorry, um, Jesse Suix. Suix? I'm not sure. S Z E W C Z Y K. It is in and the list. You guys can it's see. It's in the top. list. On the in the wait in the. There be it'll be below for them. It's on the side for us, but it'll be below for them. All right. So in the list, it's called Tasty Pride, and it is a wonderful exploration of uh, stories about food and community, and with from LGBTQ plus chefs everywhere. It's got these amazing recipes that the chefs bring, and then stories about resilience and. <clears throat> excuse me, self-acceptance. All of the recipes are incredibly accessible and unbelievably tasty. Mm. Um, but the tagline for the book is so sweet. It's be proud, be loud, and be flavorful, which Aww, I think is just perfect. That. It's delightful. so charming. And the, the colors are so bright. It's got a very pop aesthetic to it. Mm. And the food is not um, haute cuisine inaccessible for the average home chef. There's plantain chips and um, I think there's uh, chickpea fritters and mm -hmm. things, but they're just incredibly flavorful and really lovely foods. And the thing that really makes this cookbook stand out is the extraordinary stories from the chefs about how they came to where they were, how they food helped them to love themselves and join a community that was very powerful. I love so, that. I know, me too. It's such a good book. Oh, it's delightful. So I'm going to take us in a sweeter direction um, with the amazing Kay McDermott's Pie Camp. <laughs> Okay, so this is actually super cool. I took a virtual baking class with Kate about a month ago uh, mm -hmm. about pie through another um, blogger and author that I follow, Joy Wilson. I took like a virtual baking class with her and she had Kate on <coughs> as her guest for Pie Week. Mm -hmm. um, so Kate taught me how to crimp, NBD, um, but she is amazing. Her techniques are fabulous. She's super straightforward, easy to understand. And I mean, just look at that. Uh. I'll show you some of the things inside too, because the photography in this book is outstanding. Um, let's see, what do we have in here? Look at this, key lime pie with blueberry glace. Oh my goodness, I look at that. It's a little foggy so you can't see the colors as vibrantly as they look in the book, but like, oh my God, don't you just wanna put the whole thing in your face? <laughs> look at the strawberry heaven mousse chiffon pie. Wow. Isn't that just absolutely beautiful? The photography is really lovely. It really is, and I, I just love it. This, here's a chocolate cream, ugh chocolate cream pie mm -hmm. uh, so she's super straightforward like Classics. super doable i have all i adore pie i've always been afraid of pie crust i just i never find the effort i put into it and make 
is worth the output. I can never get it quite right. Like it never looks pretty. When she taught me how to make a pie crust, it looked pretty. I made a lattice. Oh, uh, like, isn't it uh, an amazing feeling of accomplishment when I you know, actually get it? Looks good. She did great. She has this whole thing with it's like you don't actually have to sort of go like this. You like interweave them. It's fabulous. Pie Camp is great. She also has another one, The Art of the Pie. Um, the Pie Camp is the newest one. So if you're looking for the person who has everything, this one's newer. So I love the idea of books this season of giving people the opportunity to elevate their skill sets. Like yeah. we're all stuck at home. We had a massive explosion of bread, which brings me to our next book. I got to find where it is. Let's see. All right. So I've got New World Sourdough. So everybody went crazy about bread, right? Did, yeah. did, did any of us not? Actually, I didn't have a sourdough starter and I feel I kind of bad. I'm afraid of them, which is why I need to get the book. But like everyone in my community was like, yeah. I have a sourdough starter and I've named it Bob. And and so at the beginning of the quarantine, I know we were all kind of bread crazy. And now that hopefully shortages of flour have gone, um, I highly recommend New World Sourdough. It is incredibly accessible. It's by Brian Ford. And um, it's incredibly straightforward. It's very easy from start to finish. It teaches you how to start a sourdough starter. It's got photos of all the techniques. It's understandable descriptions. They take you from the basics to things that are more complicated like pita and mm -hmm. pizza crust and focaccio and even enriched doughs like brioche yeah. and challah. Yeah, and, and it's- you have a sourdough starter, this book is still can be for you, like the yes. rest is within it. It's not just like sourdough starter and nothing else. You can go beyond yeah. just having a starter. No, absolutely. And it's, and it's very, a lot, I find a lot of bread books are oftentimes very dense and difficult. They talk a lot about crumb I'll control. Now, so. Yeah, right. Dense and difficult. Thank you. Yeah. That was wonderful, Amanda. Um, yeah, mine too. I just, I have a hard time managing the simple build of it and knowing mm -hmm. that I can get consistent results and cooking with these recipes was really easy. So if you have somebody who did not jump on the sourdough train or who is interested in cooking even better bread accessibly and easily with very, very good instructions, this is the book for you. Amazing. Uh, now the next one I have is one that I have been excited about since we got in the store. It's a literary holiday cookbook. <laughs> Of course. Of course. <laughs> I have to say, based on this cover, you would think it's just Christmas. The cover is misleading. It has holidays throughout the entire year, like there's Halloween in here, there's New Year's, um, and it's festive meals for the Snow Queen, Gandalf, Sherlock, Scrooge, and book lovers everywhere. Um, so it's recipes for the different literary characters and how they would celebrate holidays. What is Gandalf's? <laughs> I know. Don't tell me this. So we got like, I will have to discover this. Yeah, you, I can't give everything away, but like for New Year's, they offer a mad New Year's party based on Alice's Adventures in Wonderland with hard sweet cheese bites, the Queen of Hearts tomato tart, herbed mushroom puffs, and eat me cakes. Yes! For Thanksgiving, you have a long expected Thanksgiving from The Hobbit um, with Baron's Honey Nut Banana Bread, Melton Melbray Mini Pork Pies, Hobbit Door Giant Chocolate Chip Cookie, and Bag End Orchard Salad. Oh my goodness, that sounds amazing. Yes. Like, and that sounds like perfectly seasoned for the holiday, you know? Yeah. And it's not like, it's a very, it's a fairly approachable cookbook. Um, we've got Coddlestone Pie from Winnie the Pooh over here. Doesn't that just look delectable? Oh, I love it. Like sometimes novelty cookbooks, not always the best, but this one really does like have actual recipes in it, uh, which I appreciate. Look at the and roasted tomato deviled scotch eggs um, from Sherlock Holmes. Roasted tomato devil scotch eggs. Oh my goodness. I'm 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 deeply intrigued and curious and delighted. This one sounds absolutely perfect for the overlapping person in your life who is passionate about literature, who's a super geek about it, and also wants to cook amazing food. Yes, and while we are there, and I'll quickly point out one more, if they're more of a pop culture fan, uh, the Feast of F Fiction Kitchen is a great choice for that. This has like Minecraft cake in it. What? I know, you need to get this for all of your children. Oh my gosh, do so, I ever. A lot of Adventure Time recipes in here. Delightful. Also, Jimmy Wong is in the new Mulan movie. Oh, there you go. Yeah, which is not really related to the book. It's just a fun fact I happen to know. So um, so this is another one with like great photography, good for like the, um, we got pizza gyoza here from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Uh, perfect for both the pop culture and food fan. That's world. fantastic. I love the idea of Minecraft cake. My kids will as well. Perfect. Um, so I've got two books by Marcus Samuelson who I, that yeah. I wanted to recommend, who is just one of my absolute favorites, favorite personalities in the culinary world. He's got his memoir called Yes Chef. And it's uh, it's just a treat of a book. It's so 
He's got such a wonderful way of writing. It traces his experiences growing up as an Ethiopian adoptee with his Swedish grandmother, all the way through his challenges through education to opening Aquavit. Um, he's got a wonderful, humble, lyrical sense mm -hmm. about his stories. It's not pretentious. It really is a memoir from the heart. But then if you're gonna buy that, I also recommend his new book that's, um, it's not quite coming out. Let's see, what date is it? All right, four days, October 20, <laughs> 27. Oh, is the rise which is black cooks and the soul of american food and it I'm is very excited about this one i'm so excited i i can tell you what the blurb says because i do not have it in my hands and i'm so excited to get it it is a celebration of black excellence in the culinary world and it's got about 150 recipes and each one has stories about creativity and perseverance and success and the influence that these chefs had and what food and how food came into their lives um it's all explorations of non-American centric African diaspora. So we go to the African continent and look at lots of different culinary traditions there mm -hmm. and to the Caribbean and not just Southern food that was brought right. in and synthesized in. Um, so some of the stuff that, this sounds so good, chilled corn and tomato soup. And that is in honor of chef Mashama Bailey, who is in, I think the first episode of uh, oh, it's on Netflix and I've forgotten. A Chef's Taste, A Chef's oh, uh, Journey. Ooh. Chef's hmm. Table? Chef's Table, I think that's right, maybe? Yes. So, okay, maybe I might be wrong. <laughs> but look up her, Mashama Bailey, she's extraordinary. She cooks in Savannah and, and this is incredible. So all of these recipes are in honor of, of excellent black chefs. Amazing. So grilled short ribs, short ribs <laughs> with saffron tapioca pudding uh, as an homage to Michael Twitty and Jessica Bieris. Amazing. And, uh, tiger nut custard tart with cinnamon poached pears in praise of Tony Tipton Martin, which uh -huh. is just, I mean, it's so cool. It's almost like a biography of all of these different amazing chefs and tracing history and beautiful photography and accessible food to cook. It's, it's gonna be great. I'm so excited that. about that one. Um, now, if you need a cookbook for someone a little younger in your life, uh, maybe like a teen or a tween who's getting into cooking, I have to recommend the Cook Korean uh, by Robin Ha, which is Robin a Ha. We adore Robin Ha. She's fabulous. Um, and this is a comic book with recipes, which just like, what else do you need? I think we also have signed book plates for Robin still. But look at this. Isn't this magnificent? Like, wouldn't wouldn't your kids love this? She's such a phenomenal author. She's got a lot of resources online, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, she's a Nova Teen author and has come to the store frequently. And like, we'll, you know, it, it's Isn't just it so active in the community. Right? You just want to make it with your whole family. She's so great. Uh, it's and great. the recipes are are very very fun. They're not they're not even you know like just a step by step recipe. It's got anecdotes and humorous asides yeah. and stories and knife noodle soup with clams. I mean, what yeah. teenager want to want to make that? Yeah, it's that's so charmingly sweet, and the way she illustrates is just wonderful. It's delightful. All right, let's see. Back to me, huh? How Ooh. about um, probably I'm, your last one? So sorry. Last one. Oh, my last one, make it good. Holy cow, crud. Um, I would recommend Nadia Hussein, Time to Eat. This is a pre-order, comes out on November 10th. She was the Great British Bake Off winner, season something, 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 well, something. We have no idea of knowing because it's all on Netflix and weird order, so. I know, it's super weird. Um, this is called Time to Eat, Delicious Meals for Busy Lives, coming out uh, November 10th. You know, a lot of her books are back ordered. She's so popular, but the thing that I love about all of her books is that she is a mom and she cooks for families. And so this has a huge number of um, ways to make your prep simpler, ways to reheat food, um, you know, things that are absolutely delicious. It's a, a lot like some of her previous books, but all of the recipes are new. They're all kid friendly. They're simple and they're delicious. And I love her. She's, She's just so delightfully accessible. She really is. And so are her books. They're yes. wonderful. They're so, this is one of those useful books that you're going to get absolutely dirty. You're going to go through step by step and have an amazing meal. Is when there's like stains all over it. Yes. Whenever my husband is like, where in the cookbook is this recipe? I'm like, just flip it open. It'll fall open to the stained page. You'll get there. Very true. Um, I'm going to end on a wild card, Kelly. Are you ready? I'm ready. Bring it. I'm going to tell you about shrubs. What? Shrubs. You know about shrubs? I do not know about shrubs. I... Well, it's different than a shrubbery. Okay. Different. I thought we were this. Monty Python. <laughs> January. When I went to a cidery in upstate New York um, and was driving, so I wanted to not drink, obviously, um, and they had shrubs. They had like a flavor of shrubs. It's a non-alcoholic like drinking vinegar. And it sounds terrible.
but it's delicious. It's like you basically cook fruit down mm -hmm. um, until it's a syrup and then you mix it with like apple cider vinegar and sugar and then you get this like syrup that you can either mix with um, sparkling water or you can mix it with an alcohol. Um, mm -hmm. if you make alcoholic. It is so, it's like a less weird kombucha. I, I have <laughs> with them early in the pandemic. I love the idea of it. I feel like every good mixologist needs to have some incredible tick, you know, tricks and trade tricks of the trade for non-alcoholic drinks and also yeah. to jazz up existing recipes. Like mixologists are some of the most extraordinarily experimental people I've ever met. So anything that elevates your game to make those drinks incredible, I'm all for. Right. And so if you have, you know, non-alcoholic drinkers in your life, this is great for them. If you just want to mix up your own mixologist game, it also makes you feel healthy because apple cider vinegar is good for you. <laughs> So that's it for our- What a great note to end on. Right, the gift for person, listen, if somebody who has everything has eaten everything, they may not know about shrubs yet, guys. <laughs> so there you go. Um, everything we've talked about, plus a few more things are listed in the link that we posted below. We'll be back next Friday um, with another delightful topic. Next Friday, we will be talking about books for the overactive book club member in your life. So the book club member who's read every book club book in the world, we're gonna to talk to you about the ones that are a little bit more under the radar. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us. Thank um, you, Amanda. Thank you all for joining our holiday office hours. Stay safe and happy reading. <laughs>